You ever heard that saying, uh, don't bet against the farm? It's like this idea that agriculture is, you know, rock solid, like the ground we stand on. Yeah. But what if I told you that even billionaires can get farm subsidies? Really? Yeah. Today, we're doing a deep dive into federal farm subsidies using this Cato Institute briefing paper as our guide. It's called Cutting Federal Farm Subsidies. Okay. Ready to dig in. Let's uh, unearth these facts and see what we harvest. I like it. Okay, so to understand this whole thing, we need to rewind a bit. Back to the 1930s. Right. The Dust Bowl. Yeah, picture the Dust Bowl. Widespread hardship for farmers. Yeah. That's really when these programs were first, you know, born as a safety net for this vital industry. Okay. And we're talking about over 150 different types of subsidies. Whoa. Insurance against bad weather, price supports to kind of keep income stable. 150. That's a lot of safety nets. And like we're paying for this, right? Exactly. Yeah. Taxpayers shell out something like $30 billion every year on these programs. Wow. It really makes you wonder, are farms inherently riskier than other businesses? Mm. Because you don't see those businesses getting these massive safety nets, right? That's a good point. And the Cato Institute, they're, you know, they're pretty upfront about it. Yeah. They cut the subsidies. Got them. Yeah. Their main argument, it's like a drag on taxpayers. Mm. And it really distorts how the market would naturally, you know, flow. Oh, absolutely. They argue that these subsidies, they can actually stifle innovation. Mm. Because think about it, if you're guaranteed a certain income no matter what, where's the incentive to to adapt? You know, oh, right. to find more efficient, better methods. It's like getting too comfortable. Exactly. And then don't those inefficiencies like come back to bite us later at the grocery store. Yeah, exactly. It's Subsidies can encourage overproduction of certain types of crops. Okay. Which, yeah, it can drive down prices for farmers, but then you've got these surpluses and then what? It goes to waste. Right. Ultimately, it impacts yep. everybody. So cheaper food, not always a good thing, especially when you consider that like the average farm household income, it's higher than the average U.S. household income. Oh, yeah. Significantly. It makes you wonder who these subsidies are really, you know, helping. Yeah. And he here's the kicker. OK. A huge chunk of those subsidies, they're going to the big players, you know. OK. The agricultural giants, not the struggling family farms that, you know, most people picture when they think about this. Yeah. Hold on. So we're talking mega farms raking in millions while like the small farms are struggling to stay afloat. It's a real problem. Something doesn't add up there. And what about the environment? Yeah. We hear all the time about, you know, subsidies supporting sustainable farming, eco-friendly, all that. Right, right. But is that the whole story or is there something else going on here? Let's just say that uh, things aren't always as green as they seem. So you're saying that these subsidies that are supposed to, like, help the environment, they might actually be hurting it? It's it's complicated. How does that even work? Well, see, subsidies can make it, you know, profitable to farm on land that's that's not really meant for agriculture, what we call uh, marginal lands. Okay. These are areas that are, you know, naturally prone to erosion, or maybe they have, like, really important biodiversity. So to get the subsidy money, some farmers might end up, like, harming the environment without even realizing it. Yeah, kind of. And that can set off this this whole chain reaction. Mm -hmm. Soil erosion, loss of habitat, even water contamination. Oh, wow. Remember earlier when we talked about sugar subsidies? Yeah. A perfect example is right here in the U.S., the Everglades. Right. The Everglades, they're, uh, they're really fragile, right? Incredibly. And, you know, that runoff from the sugarcane farms, yeah. that's been a huge problem pollution, you know, and just degrading the Everglades. Man, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow, you know. It makes you wonder, are we are we sacrificing the long-term health of the environment like just to kind of get a quick fix? Yeah, it's like putting a band-aid on a much bigger problem. Totally. And look, it's complicated. There are valid arguments on both sides. Some people say that farming by its very nature, you know, is at the mercy of mother nature. Yeah. The weather's unpredictable, market prices go up and down. It's like they face challenges that other industries just, they don't. Okay, I get that. But, I mean, don't all businesses have risks? Like, tech companies have to adapt. Restaurants, you know, they have to deal with changing tastes. What makes agriculture so different? Right. That's the question. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, there are other ways to manage those risks, you know, without relying on, you know, on the government to step in all the time. Okay. Like other industries, they use things like forward contracts. Okay. That's where they agree to, you know, sell a product at a certain price in the future. Okay. Or they diversify. They don't put all their eggs in one basket. You know what I mean? Yeah. So instead of just growing, like 
one thing farmers could what explore different approaches different crops to to kind of protect themselves exactly are there any i don't know any like real world examples of this actually playing out absolutely look yeah. at new zealand they got rid of well they phased out most of their farm subsidies back in the 80s really yeah what happened the agricultural industry it didn't just survive it thrived wow they proved that you can be successful you can be competitive without you know without the government constantly you know propping you up that's that's a really interesting example so it sounds like i mean there's a lot to think about here yeah we've got this long history of these subsidies but then we're seeing the downsides and then uh. we see that there are these other ways to do things like it's a lot to unpack it really is what should we be i don't know like taking away from all of this so are we just supposed to like scrap the whole system like new zealand yeah. Just get rid of all the subsidies. Well, it's, you know, it's not really about finding this, like, one-size-fits-all solution. It's more about, you know, actually starting a real conversation about this stuff. Okay. We see what the Cato Institute is saying, right? They want to cut the subsidies. Right. But maybe there's, like, a middle ground here, you know? Oh. What if What if we took those billions of dollars and used them to actually promote you know, truly sustainable farming practices? Okay, so instead of just, like, giving money to any farm, we support the ones that are, you know, actually good for the planet. Exactly. But what would that even look like in practice? Imagine, you know, farmers getting rewarded for, like, protecting biodiversity. Well, we Yeah, for improving the soil, for using less water. Right. So we're shifting the focus, right? It's not just about, you know, squeezing as much as you can out of the land. Right. It's about, you know, a more holistic, you know, sustainable approach. Right. So thinking long term. Exactly. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, we'd be... Like investing in the system as a whole, the food system and the environment. Exactly. It wouldn't be about like just handing out money. It'd be about supporting, you know, the kind of farms that we want to see more of. I couldn't agree more. And then what about, I mean, how does this impact, you know, us, like the people buying the food? Think about it this way. When you go to the store, your food dollars, they would be like directly supporting the farmers who are doing things the right way. You know, you'd know that you're not just buying a product, you're actually investing in a healthier future. Right. It's like almost like voting with your fork. You yeah, know? exactly. Choosing to support the, you know, the farmers who are like, you know, doing things the right way. But like this kind of change, I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. Yeah. So what can like what can we as, you know, just regular people, what can we do to actually make a difference? It starts with knowledge, you know? Yeah. The more we know about where our food comes from, how it's grown, the better choices we can make. Right. So, you know, support your local farmer's markets. Yeah. Ask questions. Find out, you know, how are they farming? And right. then advocate for, you know, for policies that you believe in. Right. It's all connected. Exactly. You know, our plates and the policies, it's like a closed loop in a way. Yeah. And at the end of the day, this impacts all of us, right? It does. Everyone eats. Exactly. And who knows, maybe by like, you know, really rethinking how we do these farm subsidies, maybe we can like, you know, actually build a system that's more sustainable, more equitable for everyone. It's definitely possible. Well, that's a wrap on another deep dive. We hope this episode, you know, maybe made you think a little differently about, you know, where your food comes from. It's complicated. There's a lot going on. No easy answers. Definitely not. But the more we know about it, you know, the better choices we can make. So keep those minds curious, folks. And remember, even the small things, they can add up to make a big difference.